this episode of Ice Pilots NWT, Buffalo Airways turns a DC-4 into a flying fuel tanker. Trouble between the sexes heats up with the arrival of a new pilot. Welcome to Buffalo. And Chief Pilot Arnie Schrader has a birthday from hell. <laughs> The Christmas season has come and gone at Buffalo Airways, and with it, a string of problems on the Mackenzie Valley Run. The Valley Run is very challenging. It is a thousand miles. That aircraft flies a thousand miles four times a week. Today, Buffalo's most senior employee, 65-year-old Chief Pilot Arnie Schrader, is flying the run. How are you doing? No one at Buffalo has more experience than Arnie, and no one knows him like Kelly Jurasevic. He's a workaholic. Arnie likes to fly. And I think as long as he can fly, Arnie will fly. As chief pilot, Arnie also trains Buffalo's rookie pilots. So a lot of them are just like sons, you know? Oh yeah, you get very, very close to me. Arnie's in a, in a spot now where he's kind of like an old Jedi, like Obi-Wan Kenobi, where he uh, has to pass on his knowledge. Today, some of that knowledge will be passed on to his co-pilot, Scott Blue. Watching him, you know, you learn a ton. He's got thousands and thousands of hours on some seriously cool machines. I've got about 37,000 hours, so that would be about four and a half years in the air. Arnie and Scott's valley run in the C-46 aircraft include stops in Norman Wells, Fort Good Hope, and Delaney. And today, something new. They're taking Kelly along for the ride. Scott's probably looking for me. Well, I'm pretty excited. I've never been on the 46, and I've worked here for a year, so I can hardly wait to go, because I get to meet all the people in the communities. Arnie's given me the chance to go, and I'm really, really excited. She wanted to go along because she wanted to meet and greet all the people that she deals with every day on the phone. So it's very good of her to want to do that, because most of the people we've had working there don't do that. The first stop on today's Valley Run is Norman Wells. Just before Christmas, co-pilot Scott Blue was stranded there for 10 days when the C-46's engine seized up. He's hoping this visit will be short and sweet. But first, he has to land the bulky C-46 in gusty conditions. Roger, that thing's pretty high. Lower your nose. Oh, okay. Good, Scott. You're doing good. Instead of a delivery, Arnie and the crew have a pickup here. 900 pound pipe destined for Yellowknife. It's an unwieldy piece of cargo. Turn it like this. Good, 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 good. Jump forward. They were rushing it a little bit with that forklift. The driver was a little jerky with the forklift. It was a different guy operating that forklift than normally does. Eh? Close call. 
You know, when he slipped and fell too, and I thought that pipe had hit him, it scared the hell out of me. Like I couldn't imagine if something happened, Arnie. Steel against steel, it moves pretty quick when it decides to slide. All right, he's a little bit too narrow on that. And thank God it didn't hit the tail or else we'd have been screwed. That stuff happens now and again. Hopefully not too often, but it does. Let's leave it. Tip up, Kyle. We'll leave it and come back and pick it up in the moves off. Arnie decides to give the forklift driver a chance to practice. He'll come back later after they've unloaded more cargo up the valley. Oh, nobody got hurt, the plane's okay, right? Yeah. Lots of matters. Thank God. No shit. Next stop, Fort Good Hope, where Kelly meets one of her customers. Hi, I'm George. Yes. I'm Kelly. Oh, how nice you to finally meet you, my dear. <laughs> That's really heavy, George. You got her? She's locked. We're wrong. We're wrong. Then it's off to Delaney. A remote community of 250 souls on the shore of Great Bear Lake. Less than 100 clicks south of the Arctic Circle. Before Christmas, Kelly had to bump Delaney's food and mail shipment for over a week due to mechanical problems on the C-46, and her customers weren't happy. Sometimes I get a little bitchy, especially Seymour over his potato chips. Seymour, my buddy! <laughs> I make sure he gets them no matter what. I'll bump his milk versus, you know, he's got to have those chips. It's so good to meet you, Seymour. This is awesome. That's my Seymour Jacobs, who runs the local food co-op, has never met Kelly in person. And she's not exactly as advertised. I told him I was 500 pounds about four feet tall. It's so good for you. A quick visit, but long enough for Kelly to put a face to what was just a voice on the phone. It was awesome. It was really good. It's hilarious. It's so funny how you think somebody looks, and then you finally meet them, and they look so different. It was pretty cool. Next, Arnie and the crew are heading back up the valley to pick up that massive pipe that gave them so much trouble in Norman Wells. Come straight ahead now. Straight in now, as far as you can go. This time, Arnie uses the onboard winch to help pull the 900-pound pipe into the cargo bay. and leaves the heavy lifting to his crew. Okay, come on. The pipe's on board. Time to head back to Yellowknife. From the most senior flyer on Buffalo's roster to the one who hopes to be the newest. Jeremy Dow is a ramp hand, or rampy. Bet. The entry-level position at Buffalo Airways. Oh, any bets on how successfully I'm going to make it to the van? Straight out of flight school, Jeremy's come north with ambitions to fly Buffalo's big vintage World War II aircraft. Yes. I rock. But before he can get into those planes, he first has to pay his dues as a courier van driver making pickups and deliveries all over town and working the ramp in the brutal cold. At six foot four, 245 pounds, rampy Jeremy can haul ass with the best of them. After four months on the ramp, he knows what it takes to move up at Buffalo. You have to work as hard as you can all the time, running, working, lifting. It all has to be done with just the best, most efficient, fastest way you can possibly do it. The key to Jeremy making the jump from the ramp to the cockpit is someone who comes from the other side of the world. Ramon Shravastava, not your typical rampy. Ramon came here on uh, my recommendation. I met him during some flight training down in Vancouver. He's the guy who called me up here. Yeah, that's... Him here is all my fault. I feel fine about it. My, clear, my conscience is clear. Ramon traded the balmy heat of his home in Kanpur, India, for the deep freeze of northern Canada. The day I landed here, it was coldest day in the like world. They said, like 
So coming all the way from here to what the heck? This. Yeah, like. Oh, Ramon's a nice guy. Good. He's uh, hard worker. He's he's trying to make the best of everything living up here. Quite a few people here. They said you are crazy. You're gonna make a mistake in your life. It's gonna be very very tough for you. And if the bone-numbing temperatures aren't bad enough, the job requires a fair bit of muscle. And for Ramon, that's in short supply. I'm not feeling that stronger as they are right now, but trying to build up my muscles so that I compete with them for sure. Yeah, he's struggling a bit with the, uh, with the physical aspect of it. It's uh, certainly his first physically demanding job. He's in good shape, he's just very small. If Ramon can tough it out, he could replace Jeremy as a rampy, freeing Jeremy to move up the ladder. Moving up the ranks one step. I'm definitely the next in line. But there's a new rampy who has just arrived at Buffalo, and she could really throw a wrench into Jeremy's plans. Still to come, Arnie Schrader rides out a bumpy 66th birthday, Buffalo style. Hang on to your hat, boy. Have your up. In the dead of winter in Yellowknife Northwest Territories, the sun rises at 10 and sets before 4. Just arrived from Quebec, some 3,000 kilometers away, Audrey Marchand heads off in the dark for her first day of work at Buffalo Airways. Audrey was working for a small airline in the south and chalked up just over 200 hours in the cockpit. She's come to Buffalo with the hope of quickly building her flying time on some seriously big planes. If I can be a co-pilot uh, in about uh, three or four months, it will be fine. How you doing? Very good, and you? Good. When a pilot comes in to Buffalo Airways, they think that they should be flying right away. But that's not the way things work around here. Audrey is thrown onto the ramp where Director of Flight Operations Mike Hanley gives her a quick orientation. The aircraft and the tail. What I'll do is I'll watch them when they come and I'll give them thumbs up because we also have to watch the wingtip on the other DC-3 park here. Yes. So we have to make sure when he comes in, he doesn't clip the other wingtip. So you really Audrey tries to follow Mike's rapid fire instructions. So you always want to hold your hand out far beside you and have your thumb up in the air. Okay, a lot of our young guys are notorious. They'll just sit there and stand there like this or like this. <laughs> if it's too close to your body, you can't see it. If you have any questions, you'll just ask. Okay. Like, don't, don't ever think you don't have to ask a question. If you don't ask, that's the worst thing to do. Yes. It's a lot for Audrey to absorb, but that's how Buffalo operates. Quick to grab the shocks. You're thrown into the fire on day one. The DC-3 arrives. I was really impressed because the planes are so big. It's time for Audrey to get to work as a rampy. The fact of the matter is, not everybody can do it or, or is willing to do it. But at Buffalo Airways, if you can survive this, the training period, when you're down in the, in the trenches and you work your way up, you could be a Buffalo Airways pilot. And on her very first shift, Audrey meets the man she will have to impress, Buffalo Joe McBrien. Morning, Joe. We have a new rampy starting today. Who's that? It's me. It's you? Yeah. Hey. This is Joe McBrien, like I said. Where are you from? Quebec. No kidding. What's your first <laughs> But rampy Jeremy Dow is not impressed. When I first saw her, my bets on her staying, sticking around were pretty damn low. She looks like she's about 100 pounds soaking wet, and she's about five foot nothing. Thank the first. A Rampy's life is all about grunt work, far from the romance of flying vintage aircraft. I hope I s I'm not going to stay long as a Rampy. I hope I'll be flying soon. For me, a Rampy is somebody who doesn't talk about being a pilot, because technically you're not a pilot. You know you might have spent $50,000 at a flight school, to get a thing that says I'm a pilot, you're not a pilot. I want to be a pilot. I don't want to be a Rampy. <laughs> but that could take a while. <laughs> the 
Buffalo Airways is feeling the pinch of the global recession this winter. Really? So any new contract is a welcome addition to their yeah, bottom line. Yeah, yeah, it won't take us long. It takes a half day to get the plane ready, and then, uh, well, we can do her. The remote village of Uranium City in northern Saskatchewan is running extremely low on fuel. They need Buffalo to fly in some gasoline from Stony Rapids, the closest town. Our DC-4 can do um, uh, about 10,000 litres a haul, so that's still five trips. To accomplish this, gas tanks must be installed on the DC-4 right away. got to watch with this is we don't break our valves off. It's hitting on the end here, guys. Do any damage to the valves. Once we go to fill it up, we're going to have a pretty big spill. You can you go another half foot over here. Buffalo it. rookie pilot Alex Wagner will be tagging along to get in some more flying time on the DC-4. I am getting itchy fingers. It's just great, actually, to be uh, at the, at the helm. Alex came to Yellowknife specifically to learn to fly the DC-4. I wanted to fly the DC-4. That's, the, that's where you do it. And uh, I wanted to fly a, a real machine, not a computer. The DC-4 is a 70-year-old four-engine piston prop plane. And Buffalo Air is one of the few places still flying them. The airplane was designed as a carrier of uh, freight and troops in the Second World War. For Alex, getting to fly this vintage plane is the chance of a lifetime. I feel privileged, actually, just to fly this, uh, this piece of history. At Buffalo, everyone, even the pilots, help make sure the aircraft is prepped and ready. Uh, this gives a chance uh, for Alex to show his merit and uh, see how he does on the job. After working through the night to install the two huge fuel tanks on board, the Buffalo crew has the DC-4 ready. Mission was uh, to fly 50,000 liter of uh, automotive gas from uh, Stony Rapids to Uranium City. The man in charge of the mission is Captain Justin Simley. Take your left. Take your right. Radios and instruments. All set. Transporting 10,000 liters of volatile gasoline is too sensitive a job for a rookie like Alex. The DC-4 can be as twitchy as a racehorse. Well, they can be a little bit cantankerous, and, uh, and you gotta you gotta think ahead with them. I mean, uh, you know, especially in the cold temperatures. Our set. Check. So Justin will be at the controls when the fuel tanks are full. And when they're empty, Alex will get some valuable flying time, including his first takeoff in the DC-4. Let's go to 30. Go to 30 with me now. 30, good on top. That's a 40 seconds now. It's a pretty big chunk of metal to, to start struggling with it. Hey, do rotate, positive read. Here. They're off to Stony Rapids to pump the tanks full of fuel and turn this aircraft into a flying tanker truck. We're making a very special cake. <laughs> it's Chief Pilot Arnie Schrader's birthday, and his good friend Kelly Jurasevic and her niece Janelle Glenn are baking him a cake. Just making a cake for Arnie's 66th birthday, <laughs> and he'll love it. It's gonna be pretty good. Be Even though it's his birthday, Arnie's not doing anything differently. He's headed up the Mackenzie Valley again today. On board are co-pilot Scott Blue and mechanic James Dojack. All right, one five four, flying at the back track. Check one five four on right. By the time this birthday is over, Arnie will wonder why he didn't just take the day off. Coming up, the DC-4 threatens to stall as it ices up in flight. It's not looking good at all.
In northern Saskatchewan, Buffalo Airways DC-4 is about to become an airborne tanker truck. It's going to shuttle 50,000 liters of gasoline to the community of Uranium City, 10,000 liters at a time. Nothing like highly flammable cargo on board to test a pilot's nerve. You don't want to get yourself killed or hurt just for, for automotive gas, basically. The tanks weigh 10 tons when full, close to the maximum payload for the DC-4. Chains should keep them secure, but there's nothing controlling the movement of the fuel inside. You can feel the uh, fuel slosh around a little bit front to back, if it's turbulent or gusty, so uh, you need to be ready for that. Captain Justin Simley and co-pilot Dan Catoni will handle each of the five fuel delivery runs, but trainee Alex Wagner will still see plenty of action on the empty shuttles back to Stony Rapids. Clear left. Uh, clear right. Dex check for Stony. Okay, coming up. The flight from Stony Rapids to Uranium City is only 160 kilometers, but with volatile cargo on board, the crew is on high alert. Halfway there, the weather turns humid and the exterior of the plane begins to take on ice. You'll just build on the leading edge of the, uh, the wing there. It's not looking good at all. Older planes like this DC-4 have no de-icing equipment. On these aircraft, we don't have the icer boots uh, or needed leading edges to get the uh, ice off the wing. Ice uh, increases your stall speed. In aviation, a stall is not when the engines fail. Stall is a sudden reduction in lift. Icing on the wings can induce stall by disrupting the flow of air over the curved top of the wing, critical to create lift. To avoid stall caused by icing, airspeed must be increased to compensate. But Justin tries to escape the freeze out altogether by dropping in altitude. So we're gonna try to get out of it here. If it doesn't work, this flying fuel tanker could fall from the sky like a brick. All around, not, not a very good thing. So we're gonna try to get out of it here. We're gonna descend out of it. Justin maneuvers to get the plane down into drier air. It's not too bad, we don't have much on there, so. You are out of it now, or between layers again. The threat of stall is averted, for now. We'll just sit tight for now. Justin continues on to Uranium City with 10,000 liters of fuel in the hold. Meanwhile, Audrey Marchand is working hard as a new rampy in hopes of getting promoted to the cockpit. But Jeremy Dow, who has already worked the ramp for four months, has his doubts about her. Definitely doesn't look like the type that I would expect to be all that happy here. She looks too, uh, too fragile. Being a female pilot anywhere, let alone Buffalo Airways, I can imagine it'd be pretty rough, but hopefully uh, she'll pull through, she'll pull through. Less than 7% of all commercial pilots in North America are women. Aviation is still a male-dominated industry. Yes, I'm Buffalo Joe calls Audrey to his office to pass on some words of wisdom. The reason you're here is to learn, yep. and it's strictly up to you. I'll do my best. How you learn, and how well you learn. Every day you gotta learn a little more. Every day you gotta be a little further ahead than you were. Thanks. So Joe's soft spot for female flyers has Jeremy looking over his shoulder. Sure Girls do get a free ride. In Buffalo a little bit. They pull their weight like the guys very, very well, and, and while they're on the team, the guys have to ship up and pull their weight because they don't want to be overshadowed by a lady doing better. I know a lot of guys here told me that I have a big advantage because I'm a girl. She'll get more than her fair chance at uh, flying here in Buffalo. If someone come here and tell me that I will take the place in the cockpit tomorrow morning as a co-pilot, I will take it. That's for sure. Airport traffic, 
down to Syracuse. Understood. Birthdays are just like any other day for Buffalo's chief pilot, Arnie Schrader. Celebrating the big 66 today, Arnie and his crew, co-pilots Scott Blue and engineer James Dojak, are 600 kilometers northwest of Yellowknife. They're about to land the C-46 in a mother of a windstorm. Like a wind there, Scotty, so just see what it's like as we get closer. Roger that. The C-46 is only rated to land in a 12-knot crosswind. Its wide profile acts like a sail. This tail-wheeled aircraft is weighted to the rear, so on landing, a straight approach is crucial to avoid the back end swinging sideways. As they get closer, wicked crosswinds blast the chunky C-46. Doesn't like crosswinds. Um, can be temperamental uh, when you flare for touchdown, and just a general pain in the butt. Well, the C-46 is very difficult to fly well because it's a large tail wheel airplane with a very large fuselage, so it's very dangerous in crosswinds. So if it starts to swing, it wants to continue to swing. And the winds were, were pretty strong, so we're coming in at an angle. We weren't coming in straight. You're limited to when you can fly that thing into strong winds, and if you look around the Arctic, there's all kinds of C-46s strewn all over it. And it was all because of wind always, eh? too much wind, and they'd ground loop them and wreck them. Hang on to your hats, boy. Have your rush. It's so bad that even a seasoned flyer like Arnie is struggling to align the aircraft with the runway in Toledo. Be prepared for a go around. I'm on the throttle The crosswinds rock the C-46 as it closes in on the landing strip. Uh, we're gonna have to go. We can't handle it here. Still make your way in. Arnie makes a split-second call and aborts the landing. Uh, around that uh, rock there, it's pretty turbulent, and the wind was blowing about 40, 45 miles an hour, and it was across the runway, so we just overshot it. Unfortunately, the 500 residents of Toledo will have to wait another day for fresh supplies. It was a good decision to uh, try not to land. <laughs> James is relieved, but Arnie's birthday from hell is far from over. Still to come. So, well, Audrey, go for it, take my seat, and fly. Audrey gets a trial by fire on the DC-3. Uranium City. Population under 100. Fuel supply nearly empty. Dean Clausen runs the local fuel delivery business. He's heading to the airstrip to meet the Buffalo DC-4. It's carrying the first of five 10,000-liter loads of gasoline. Now we're out of gas in town, and the next supply would be the winter road, so can't run a community road without any gas. Normally, gas is trucked up on the ice road across Lake Athabasca, but the ice isn't thick enough yet to support the weight of trucks. So flying the gas in is the only option. Fuel trucks pulling in. Cool. Buffalo's come to our rescue quite, quite a few times in the past. They're really kind of a savior this year. The DC-4 lands, and there's no time to waste. The 10,000 liters of fuel needs to be transferred from the plane to Dean's truck. But pumping the gas is taking up valuable time. Uh, we, don't want the, uh, we don't want the engines freezing up, that's for sure. If the once red-hot engines freeze up, the crew could be stranded here, and Buffalo's fuel delivery contract would be thrown into jeopardy. Fuel transfer is done, but Justin, Dan, and Alex have four more loads to pick up in Stony Rapids and deliver to Uranium City, all in a day's work.
After a rough ride and aborted landing over Toledo, birthday boy Arnie Schrader, co-pilot Scott Blue, and mechanic James Dojak approach Norman Wells, their final stop of the day. Flat tire. We landed and the airplane started all shaking and everything, and Arnie's all, ah, f he blew a tire off. Oh, Okay, one for five, you know. wheel. Or a broken tail wheel. Just started bouncing a little bit, and you know, immediately Arnie's like, oh no, we blew a tire, you know. I gotta get it off the runway. Roger that. Hopefully we can bust out of there. Right in the airplane, huh? What is it, flat or broken? Changing a tire in these conditions won't be easy. Well, it's dirty not, so it's really not very good to change the tire. The first priority is to tent the engines so they don't freeze up. Hey, James! Hi! Right. We're gonna need help putting these tents on! If we don't get that, the wind off of that engine, it's gonna freeze out and then she won't start. He's gonna replace that tire, so we'll be here for a while. And they cool down fast. Whatever the f dust is dirty, who knows? I had the tent on on top of the engine on the right-hand side. Grab it! Hey. It was just getting tossed uh, like a rag doll. And for a second there, I was worried I was going to get tossed off. They only managed to get a tent on the engine most exposed to the wind. Well, three of us, we couldn't hold on. It's like a parachute wants to take off, eh? As the mechanic on board, James is responsible for fixing the flat tire. There's just one problem. You never changed one before? He'd never changed the, spare, the rear tire on before. I'd never done it out in the field before, so yeah. <laughs> Wind's blowing and got the snow coming at you. And my first thought was, F I gotta do this now. <laughs> Normally, James is up to his armpits and airplane guts in the relative warmth of the Buffalo hangar. Go. Like all the engineers at Buffalo, he'll take 60-year-old piston pounders over modern jets any day. You get a chance to get dirty. In the newer airplanes, you really don't get a chance to get dirty. We're diehards, really. You know, we, we love the machines, so... That's kind of what drives us to, to keep them going. You gotta give it love and care and she'll keep going and going. During the brutal winter months, Buffalo engineers often fly on board in case anything goes wrong. Like a flat tire. You have to jack it up so you can get the, the wheel out and the new one in. They have a jack, but there's still a problem. Size matters. The jack isn't raising the tail high enough to lift the wheel off the ground. Still too fing low. But the higher James raises the tail in these roaring winds, the more precarious the balance. After using every scrap of wood on board and every expletive that comes to mind, success. But now, all that's holding up the rear of the 43,000 pound aircraft is one small jack mounted on top of a stack of two by fours. That wind, it, it had caught the tail and knocked it over on the ass, and you know, we're underneath it, you know. Uh -oh. At the Buffalo hangar in Yellowknife, new rampy Audrey Marchand is feeling more like a janitor than a pilot. Like, you know, the, the broom man. The broom man is useful, but who wants to be a broom man? 
I'm gonna go tell Audrey that she's coming to Hay River tonight on the sked, which she probably isn't expecting. Audrey has been chosen to fly tonight with the boss, Joe McBrien. A chance Jeremy would rather be getting himself. So, you are heading to Hay River tonight? Under Joe's scrutiny, Audrey will be showing off her piloting chops on the DC-3 evening sked flight. I'm just happy to, to fly because it's been a while. Flying with Joe is a rite of passage for every Buffalo Rampy who aspires to become a working pilot. I feel pretty confident. I think yes. I hope. <laughs> I hope it's going to be great. While Jeremy has seniority at Buffalo, it's not the only factor that will get him closer to the cockpit. Well, capability at number one. Seniority, they'll become senior by capability. I believe that somebody should be uh, rewarded on how hard they work. Jeremy's working hard, but he's beginning to see that Audrey may be more of a threat than he originally thought. Uh, I've heard rumors that if there's anybody who's gonna jump somebody in line, it's a girl. Tough shit, like, that's just how it is. If she makes a good impression on Buffalo Joe, Audrey could move up the ranks before Jeremy does. It's whatever Joe says. Whatever Joe says goes. This is real life, this is what happened. In some of these situations, the best man doesn't always win. On the tarmac in Norman Wells, the bitter wind and cold make even a basic task like changing a tire a major deal. Your fingers go numb in no time flat, and the wind's just blowing all the heat away from you. After an hour, you know, 40, 50 below, you start to really feel it. You can hurt yourself pretty bad. While birthday boy Arnie Schrader keeps warm in the plane, fear of frostbite has mechanic James Dojak and co-pilot Scott Blue ducking for shelter. Nice to get me home, tired. Yeah. yeah, it's cold out today, boys. I don't know how his fingers can fall off. Like in terms of handling that cold steel in that wind and having to hammer and bang and, and figure it out. James finally gets the spare bolted in place. But what could have been done in less than 30 minutes in the hangar has taken them nearly two hours in these inhuman conditions. And that's way longer than any of them wanted to leave the engines exposed. One call, Scotty. Now, the question is, will the plane start? That's the thing about these old machines, that you're, you're fighting a battle against heat, heat retention in the engines, and having enough warmth in them to start. We're gone. We're going home. It looks like Arnie will make it home to celebrate his birthday after all. It's 4 o'clock in Yellowknife. Prep time for Buffalo's evening sked flight to Hay River. Tonight, new rampy Audrey Marchand will pilot a plane she's never flown before. It's my first time in this type of plane too, so it's my first DC-3 flight. If that's not enough pressure, she'll be flying with the boss, Buffalo Joe McBrien. Once they're in the air, Audrey doesn't move to the co-pilot seat as she expects. Buffalo Joe has a different plan for her. After the takeoff, he said, well, Audrey, go for it, take my seat and fly. Joe gives Audrey the captain's seat, and co-pilot Ian Bottomley gets her up to speed. This is a lock. All the way up like that? Yep. Uh, no. Joe keeps a close eye from the back of the cockpit. 
I was used to fly in little planes, so when I flew that big plane, it was quite exciting. It's like being in a little car and driving a big, big bus. Make sure you're at the right altitude and you're 10 miles, 1,900 feet. And then uh, Joe will be pretty happy with you. When the plane start to go down to go to Hair River, uh, Joe will take back his seat. But it was very nice. To the control of the plane. <laughs> Joe is pleased with Audrey's performance. Enthusiasm, motivation buys it all to start with, so that's there already. So from there on, we'll see where she, where she runs with it. Thank you. If Audrey can keep impressing him, it could mean getting off the ramp and into the co-pilot seat faster. I think I did a great job, and like at the end of the day, I was proud of myself. <laughs> Still ahead. Audrey's euphoria is short-lived as she gets a look at her overnight accommodations. We'll clean it out. We'll get you sheets and stuff. Shouldn't be too terrible. After a successful debut flight in the DC-3, Audrey is introduced to Buffalo Staff House in Hay River. She'll be spending the night here. House residents, as you can see, they like to break down washrooms, begin renovations and then walk away. It's a marvelous thing. There's a sink in the shower, and um, neither of which work. Just gonna close that door, and that's what we find. See, now she's not, she's less excited now about being in Hay River now that she knows what's actually here. Yeah. Jeremy's been living here for months and tries to make her feel at home. When I get in the room I was supposed to, to sleep in, <laughs> there was, uh, there was stuff everywhere. I doubt it's your size. I've been in a lot of staff houses, so I'm maybe biased. This one's pretty nice. It was just a big mess. Yeah, we still have to clean people's stuff out a little bit because the last people left in a bit of a hurry and left everything. So we'll clean it out. We'll get you sheets and stuff. Shouldn't be too terrible once everything's no, all right. No, guys, not. It's a big enough room, and I think it's a warm one, so. OK, great. Now what? Just another staff house room. Welcome to Buffalo. Jeremy's playing nice, but that will change if Audrey gets promoted before he does. I'm a great guy right now. She jumps me in line while then civility sort of goes out the window. Yep. After a hellish birthday battling flat tires, falling pipes, and ferocious winds, Arnie Schrader finally makes it back to Yellowknife. The Buffalo gals have a naughty surprise to cheer him up. Coconut and white hairs is awesome. It's cool. <laughs> I was kind of shocked there. It caught me by surprise. <laughs> if the rookies at Buffalo Airways can survive 40 years in this business the way Arnie has, they too will have a ball. Or two. On the next episode of Ice Pilots NWT. Well, their, their phones just went dead. Like just, the power's kicking off. Except for one. Buffalo Airways scrambles to respond to an emergency call. It's exciting. Gets the blood pumping. Back out. Well, we can't leave it like that. This ain't going to fly, boys. Three ramp hands fight to get ahead. I love my dog. You have to prove yourself. Grumble. And Joe's on the brink of a $7 million deal that could save Buffalo Airways. That is not part of this agreement. 